A quick new idea daily from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. If we think back to the experiences of our great grandparents, maybe before the mass introduction of antibiotics or even refrigeration, so much of our lives have been improved by advances in science, tech, and design. But every innovation has ripple effects, and sometimes they can threaten public health, personal safety, and the environment. Leila Ajarlu is a sustainability strategist who's here to remind us that our best intentions don't always lead to positive innovations for society. In 1989, I was seven years old. I was sitting in the back seat of my friend's mom's car. She's driving along and she's explaining to me that there's this giant bubble that covers the earth and it protects us from the harmful UV rays of the sun. And then she proceeds to tell me about how humans created this stuff called CFCs. It was creating these big holes and we were all going to die. <laughs> and so I, at being seven, decided to suggest some solutions to the problem. Firstly, I said we could erect giant sunshades. Apparently that wasn't going to work. And so then I put up the offer of all hiding under blankets. No, that wasn't going to work either. We were all going to die, according to her. Thankfully, though, after I went home, bawled my eyes out and had nightmares for weeks, I discovered that something was already in action. Two years earlier, in 1987, the leaders of the world came together and they signed the Montreal Protocol. I think this is absolutely amazing. And the Montreal Protocol has been claimed to be one of the most important and actually effective, given that people actually signed it and stuck to it, international regulation ever. But the story of how we got to the hole in the ozone layer to begin with is even more fascinating. And it starts with this man, Thomas Midgley. Refrigeration gases were totally toxic. And because people had these in their homes and they had a habit of leaking, people were literally gassed to death in their houses. So Thomas, what he came up with was Freon. Freon is an inert, colourless, odourless, non-toxic gas that he believed in so much that he got up at the American Chemical Association's annual event to demonstrate just how non-toxic Freon was. He inhaled a massive breath of the gas and then he blew out a candle to prove that it was also non-flammable. Freon was fluorofluorocarbon, or otherwise known as CFC. CFCs ended up in hairsprays, refrigerators, and a number of other consumer goods. And <laughs> I think about this story now and I wonder if Thomas had had a crystal ball, then perhaps he would have done things differently. In the 1970s, they discovered that Thomas's invention of CFCs was causing these holes in the ozone layer, which were threatening all life on Earth, as my friend's mum chose to tell me in no child-appropriate ways. <laughs> and what this teaches us, or what this shows us now, is that hindsight's brilliant, and we look back and go, how could he have done that? But also, that we need to be very careful of the law of unintended consequences. And this is, basically, when any action, decision, or choice is made, there is the possibility of either a positive, negative, or perverse unintended outcome. And the history is riddled with the story of unintended consequences. French ruled Vietnam. During this time, there was a rat plague. And the French government of the day decided that they would put a bounty on rat tails as a way of trying to encourage people to kill them to eliminate the rat plague. This worked incredibly successfully at first. But very soon, people who were making money out of this ran out of rats. So what did they do? Rat farms. Hey, I love ingenious thinking. This is brilliant. Innovation. So basically, rat farms, and they kept collecting the money. Very quickly, the government figured this out. And so they stopped paying money for the rat's tails, which means economic incentive gone. What do you do? You let go of your rats. So rat population increased again. 
These kinds of interventions happen all the time. And recently, when governments are trying to tackle issues like、uh, air pollution from car emissions, they implement incentives to try and control or influence people's behavior. Converters, and the next thing you know, air pollution increases. This all shows us that good intentions can often result in far bigger problems, and this is a really big issue when we're trying to solve serious world issues, whether it be poverty, deforestation, climate change. When we don't understand the consequences of the choices that we make, even in our own lives, ten years ago it wasn't when I was seven that was just traumatizing. G could tell, have, and I could have some discussions about that. But so, ten years ago, I'm, I was studying design, product design, and my lovely old lecturer. He walks in and he says, "All right, everybody, we're going to learn about this thing called the Gaia theory, and that is that everything in nature is interconnected. So, as a designer, you're probably going to make choices about materials or processes that will have major impacts on the planet that you probably won't know about." I was like, "Oh, right." What? <laughs> Nobody ever told me this before. How am I supposed to make decisions? I don't want to hurt people or the planet. Oh my gosh, this is just too much. Really, I had a major freakout, first of many.、Um, and I turned to the rest of my class as the lecturer had just explained all these potential environmental degradative results of choices that I, as a simple designer, was going to make. I turned to my class and I said, "Oh my gosh, what are we going to do, guys?" So anyway, I marched myself right out of design school and right into sustainability school because I felt the weight of not knowing. And even though I didn't know about the law of unintended consequences then, I really, really didn't want to be responsible unintentionally, even if I didn't know about it, for causing damage somewhere else, for creating, making choices that had impacts that were far beyond my intention as a human being, as an individual. In fact, systems are the underlying code to everything that exists on Earth. They basically create the foundation for everything that we love and respect on this planet. Systems aren't just the big systems of how the climate is managed. It's not just the industrial systems of how we all get iPhones and other lovely technological in- inventions. It's not just these systems. It's every system. It's our relationships. It's the things that we hold dear, our families and our friends. All of these systems interrelate, and unless we understand those systems and we work within the limitations of them, we have unintended consequences. The coolest thing about sustainability is that it is the most amazing catalyst for innovation. You can't deny the fact that limitations are like honey for people's imaginations. Okay, so basically, if we use sustainability as a criteria for innovation, for innovative thinking, just as those farmers in、uh, French rural Vietnam managed to cash in on that intervention, we have the capacity of really evolving and solving some of these critical issues that we face. I think we desperately need to think differently about sustainability. You can't solve a problem with the same kind of thinking that got you there in the beginning, and that's what we're doing now. We're constantly just using short-term thinking to layer upon simple solution to simple solution on complex problems. And at the end of the day, what we're actually doing is sustaining the unsustainable. So, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, a store clerk or a CEO. Or anything in between this amazing planet that we exist on. Sustainability is an opportunity. All we have to do is we have to see it differently. We have to think differently, and we have to seek to understand how we can all make choices that have a positive consequence on the planet. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded in 2013 in Melbourne, Australia. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Melbourne. Want to listen to more TEDx talks? Explore the entire archive on the TEDx YouTube channel. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening, and see you tomorrow.